These are the best beginner certifications to help you get your first job in cybersecurity. So there's going to be a list of six entry-level certifications in cybersecurity that are highly sought after as well as very well known in the cybersecurity space and are the perfect position if you're someone who just graduated with a cybersecurity degree or maybe you just graduated from a cybersecurity boot camp. The first one on this list is the CompTIA Security Plus, which is a very popular one. This is also the certification that I got when I was about a year into my career, but you can get the certification with no years of experience and self-studying so you don't have to have years of experience to take this exam. The Security Plus is by CompTIA which is a very popular organization that has many entry-level certifications specifically for cybersecurity. Security Plus, A Plus, Network Plus, Pentest Plus, lots of other security certifications and the A Plus and Network Plus are ones that we're going to discuss later in this video but personally for me the Security Plus really helped fill in the gaps of the security knowledge that I didn't have, especially because I didn't come from a cybersecurity background. I was an IST major slash IT major, and the most experience I had in security was with was with this security certification that my college had. It wasn't internationally affiliated or anything, but it basically just had me take some extra security classes, including digital forensics and network security. And outside of that, my cybersecurity knowledge is basically non-existent. So I had some experience from my first job, and everything else was studied from my security plus. That kind of gave me the foundations of cybersecurity knowledge I guess and the cybersecurity exam topics are split into different domains so there's topics ranging from identity and access management to malware to cryptography to to different network ports and protocols as well as vulnerability management and and certificates and things like that so there's a lot that goes into the security plus and I really think that it's an awesome certification to get started in I do think it is very comprehensive so it's a lot, it covers a lot of information. Personally, I use the CompTIA all-in-one textbook to study and that textbook in general was 600 something pages and that was also one of the first times I actually read a textbook front to back. Yeah, I do think it's very comprehensive. It probably took me while working full-time a total of four months to study for it and including other resources like practice exams and using O'Reilly. So there's a lot of studying that went into it. I do think it's a very large exam and there's others on this list that, that may be less intense in terms of the material that's covered. But because the Security Plus is so popular, especially for entry-level cybersecurity roles and early career roles, I think it's still worth getting if you're someone who has a grasp on their cybersecurity foundations, then you may not need as much studying as I did who didn't have that cybersecurity background coming in. Yeah, it's really up to you what you prefer, but I'll put on the screen here the details for the exam as well as the cost of the CompTIA Security Plus certification exam. And for those of you who are just getting started in cybersecurity, I do have a course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity. This covers everything that I use personally to get my foot in the door in cybersecurity without any prior experience, from resumes to cover letters to interview prep and the actual job application process. And if you're interested, you can check out the course linked in the description below. All right, next up on this list is the GSEC or the GIAC Security Essentials Certification. GIAC is another organization that has many different cybersecurity certification exams, ranged from entry level to beginner to, to mid level, and it's another great option or alternative if you don't prefer to take the Security Plus or a CompTIA exam. So, directly from their website, the GSEC certification validates a practitioner's knowledge of information security beyond simple terminology and concepts. GSEC certification holders are demonstrating that they are qualified for hands on IT systems some roles with respect to security tasks. Areas covered are defense in depth, cryptography, cloud security, network security, incident handling and response, Linux, SIEM, web security, and a bunch of Windows network slash security things. They also have a list of who should take the GSEC certification, but as you can see based on kind of what you've been hearing, the GSEC is a little bit more leaning towards the IT side. So if you're thinking like of a systems analyst role, if you're thinking of an IT role, those are the roles that a GSEC certification may be more beneficial for. But of course, there's a lot of overlap between the Security Plus and the GSEC. So it's really up to you what areas that you are more interested in that, that kind of help you decide what certification that you want to go for. So the Security Plus may be more typical for security analysts, but that doesn't mean someone with a GSEC isn't going to get a security analyst role. It's definitely very common. In my opinion, they're both kind of at the same level, but of course, personally, I haven't taken the GSEC, so I can't say exactly 100% for sure, but just based on the different materials out there for the GSEC certification exam, they also have some cyber live courses that I, again, don't have any experience with, but they do have kind of like a real world testing lab where 
can actually practice and work on your skills and learning specifically in that environment so that definitely seems like a big plus the gsec also has practical questions that require performance of real world work tasks that you might be doing on the job security plus has something like that but it definitely doesn't sound as in-depth as as this description is making it sound but but if you guys have taken the gsec let me know in the comments if this rings true or not i also put some information on the screen of the exam of the exam details itself from the exam format as well as the cost of the exam and the next certification on this list is the sscp so if you guys are familiar with the cissp which is probably the i would say the most popular certification in cybersecurity, especially for your mid-level i believe it requires i believe it requires five or seven years of experience to take the exam and be officially certified after you pass and they also you know do a whole auditing of your work experience to make sure that it fits into the security domains that the exam tests for it's definitely a very well known and well sought after certification in cybersecurity, and the exam is also very comprehensive in itself the sscp is actually kind of like the entry level early career version of that where you don't necessarily need to have those years of experience to take the exam so the sscp certification is proctored or provided by the isc2 organization sscp stands for a system security certified professional they also have online training specifically for certification i know they also seem to have some course programs where they kind of walk you through all the material that's on the exam so based on their website the sscp is ideal for it admins managers network security professionals, anyone that's doing hands-on work, the so security analysts, systems engineers, security administrators, security specialists slash consultants. So a lot of security-based roles that may be more hands-on and might also put you in a role where you are the subject matter expert of a security system. So to qualify for the SSCP certification, you need to pass the exam and have at least one year of experience in the security domains that are listed on their website. But if you don't have experience yet, you can take the exam first and then earn the year of experience after afterwards to then become officially certified. You get what's called an associate of ISC2 and basically by then you already passed the exam and you just need to earn the extra one year experience and then you'll be officially considered certified. But you can also get the experience waived if you're someone who has an eligible degree in cybersecurity that's able to help you just not need that one year of experience at all and just directly get certified after you pass the exam. And the seven common bodies of knowledge that the SSCP covers are access control, security operations and administration, risk identification, monitoring and analysis, internet response and recovery, cryptography, network and communication security, as well as systems and application security. So like I mentioned in the beginning, a lot of these entry level certifications slash beginner certifications really do cover similar things just because, you know, as an entry level person, there's only really so much foundational that you can cover. It's kind of like a mile wide but an inch deep for all the topics and you're really just gonna be covering a broad breadth of knowledge compared to going really deep in one specific area unless you're trying to go into an area that's specifically more niche and you already know that you want to be in that space for example if you want to do digital forensics or if you want to go into network security and i'll put on the screen some information about the about the sscp in terms of the exam format and the cost of the exam all right the next two certifications on this list i do want to kind of talk about together because I usually talk about these two together and they are the CompTIA A+, and Network+. Plus. So these two aren't necessarily going hand in hand, but they are kind of like the more entry level slash junior counterparts to the Security+. Plus. But they're also great options for those of you who may be just starting out in cybersecurity and maybe don't have a grasp on a lot of the foundations and specifically for the A+. Plus. So starting with the A+, plus, this one's kind of interesting in where it has actually two exams that you have to pass, but because it's split into two separate exams, it also means that you're studying less for each exam. Personally, I'm someone who does like to take everything all at once, so I don't have to, you know, wait to suffer later. But again, if you're just starting out and you don't want to overwhelm yourself, for example, studying for four months means that you need to cram four months of information into your head, or at least that was my experience with the Security Plus. And I don't think it's the best experience, especially if you're someone who's working full time, uh, if you're going to school full time, if you if you have family or other life obligations that need your attention. The A Plus is nice because it kind of lets you split an exam into two and you can just study for whatever domains security topics are in each part of the exam separately it does kind of just make it a little bit easier to study for because there's a lot less memorization involved because you're just memorizing less topics at once so all CompTIA exams do do have some recommended experience um they ask you to have some they i believe they ask you for a few months of experience for the a plus but you don't it's not required you don't need any years of experience to take it it's just recommended but you can kind of see the a plus as a more junior version of the security plus that doesn't cover as many security topics 
And then the Network Plus is a certification by CompTIA that is also more so entry level, but is focused specifically on the networking side. So if you're someone who knows that you're interested in network security and know that you want to be a sysadmin or a network engineer, then you probably want to go for the Network Plus over the Security Plus because it's just more niche and more relevant to the skill set and the knowledge base that you're going to use on the job. And you don't have to spend time studying the other topics of cybersecurity that maybe won't be as relevant to your job anyway. So Network Plus is definitely a great option if you already know what you want to go into. And I'll put up the information of the A plus certification as well as the cost of the certification as well as all the information for the Network Plus. All right, the last certification on this list that I want to discuss is the GISF. And this is the GIAC Information Security Fundamental Certification. So by now you probably know the three main kind of organizations that have certifications for entry-level cybersecurity professionals. CompTIA, GIAC, and ISC2. And these three are probably going to be the main ones that are, that are basically just globally accredited and also the most well-known. So if you're applying for a job and they're looking for some kind of required certification or recommended certification that they're looking for in their candidates, then it's probably going to be a certification from one of these three organizations. And I think that's the good thing about cybersecurity, at least there are common slash popular certifications out there. So you don't have to get lost in the weeds between what certification to study for. And honestly, any of these certifications that you pass are likely going to be enough to help you get your first job in cybersecurity. Okay, so officially from the GIAC website, the GIAC Information Security Fundamental Certification validates a practitioner's knowledge of security foundations, computer functions and networking, introductory cryptography, and cybersecurity technologies. The areas covered are cybersecurity terminology, the basics of computer networking, security policies, incident response passwords, and intro to cryptography. So the GISF is definitely a much more beginner certification compared to the GSEC certification. This is especially, I would kind of consider this maybe the A plus compared to the security plus with the GISF compared to the GSEC certification. Um, but both, you know, just one's CompTIA version and the other one is the GIAC version. So if you're someone who is still new to cybersecurity fundamentals, including cybersecurity terminology, like what is an SIEM, what is malware, what is what are the types of malware, what is cryptography, hashing versus encryption, those things are going to be covered at a beginner level in this certification. So it's a really great option to start if you're someone who is, again, just starting out in security and maybe you don't want to take the CompTIA A+. This certification is a great alternative and it's only one exam. So the A plus is two exams and this one is one. So that may be another reason for you to choose to choose this certification over the A plus. But again, it's really up to you guys, depending on the format of the exam that you want to cover. I'll put some information of the GISF certification in terms of the exam, as well as the cost of the exam. It is one proctor's exam with 75 questions in two hours, and you need a minimum score of a 72% to pass. So hopefully this video was helpful in helping you guys decide what certification to get. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any questions or if you have any certifications that you might want to add to this entry level list because I know there's many out there. These are kind of just the ones that are popular that I've seen that I've seen floating around a lot in job applications and different recommended experiences. But of course there are many many of them out there. And by the way if you're watching this video in December then that means I have decided to post one video a day in December and Hopefully that goes well, but let me know if you guys have any video topics that you might want to see because I will be posting one video for every day in December unless something goes horribly wrong and I'm no longer able to do that. That's likely going to be what you'll be seeing on, on this channel. Thank you guys so much for all of your support and hopefully we can get through this month together. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Obviously except this month because I'm posting once a day for this month. But yes, hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!